we had a mystery on our hands this week. The scholars in this room are the crew of the mighty ship the Visioneer. While in search of an ancient treasure, we were marooned on an island and a key part of our navigational map went missing. Of the entire crew, we considered four suspects. Today, you will hear the evidence collected against Dr. Smart and Sir Shipwright Ness. We are the medical examiner A. This is Sophia, this is Gia, and I'm Horn, and today we're going to be telling you how the lungs function and how to apply a SAM spray in case of a medical emergency. After the shipwreck, many of the crew members were very injured. We, are gonna, we learned how to um, apply SAM, a, a SAM splint um, to help treat um, inj injuries. We are going to show you how to put a sugar tongue, um, tongue splint on you and it is used for arms and wrist injuries. So first we are going to um, do the uh, non her arm to measure. So we are going to measure this arm and then we are going to put it on the injured arm. And then after putting it onto the injured arm, you would bandage it up with an ace bandage. We made an we made an example of a lung because our CSI case is connected. A crewmate had a collapsed lung. Our diaphragm moves when we breathe. When you pull the diaphragm, the balloon fills up. So right here is an example. When you pull it, the balloon blows up. And then when you let go, it just like lets go. So this is an example of a lung. So we decided that observation was the best option because surgery is a little bit risky. This is how we help cheat the injured crew members. We, we are, are the engineering, engineering group. In STEM, we have been learning about engineering. We have built and programmed an MBOT to help us find two missing crew members. Robert Neff and Sydney Young. To build the MBOT, we had to first learn about all the pieces. These pieces were used in many different functions. Next, we had to assemble the MBOT. Then we had to program. Bentley will now talk more about programming. We programmed the MBOTs to retrieve and locate Sydney Young and Shipwright Neff. We, also, we went through many obstacles. One obstacle was that was programming with blocks like this. Those were very hard because it gave most of us confusion. We had a, we, obstacle two was that the Shipwright Neff and Young were in a hard to reach place, so we had to do our robots to do it. This is how it works. So basically, if you want to move forward, you click this, and then you can dr drag this onto here, which I already have mine. And when you hit the play button, it will go through something like our bridge. Like that. Now, I'll, that helped us lead to Neff kidnapping Young because she, because they, our robot saw him and she, um, Young explained it to us. Now I will let um, Dominic explain the trust bridge. After we located and brought home the two um, crewmates, we had a bad storm and that flooded the island. We lost food supply and we sent out an MBOT to go retrieve the food. We had to use this trust bridge, which is built out of triangles because they are built for many structures to hold lots of weight. The, the pieces are made out of straws and paper clips, and at the bottom there is a cardboard strip to hold the MBOT. And if it, it will go across this, like that would be the food supply over there, and under here there wouldn't be anything. successfully 
from back. This this evidence proves that Nelf is Neff is guilty for kidnapping Sydney, and this evidence also proves that he has took part in this crime. We are the medical examiner B group today. We are talking about snake bites and heart dissection. So, in the case of the missing map, a crew member of the ship caught some kind of a heart disease. So, in this presentation, we'll be talking about that and also snake bites. And if you already know, I will be talking about the heart dissection. So, again, a crew member caught a heart, so like some kind of heart disease. We had to dissect a calf heart so we could learn the different departments of the heart. We learned that heart attacks can also be caused like by blood clots. We also helped Dr. Smart treat the patient that had the some kind of sort of heart disease. Now it's your turn. Hello, I will be doing the snake bite venom and what it does to the body. And so while Young was being kidnapped by Nef, she was bitten by a snake. We needed to de determine what snake she was bitten by so we could get the right anti-venom. We learned about two types of venom, neurotoxic venom and homotoxic venom. To, to see what venom did to the wood, we put lemon juice and milk. Hemotoxic venom forms blood clots, and neurotoxic venom will attack your nerves and make it will can cause paralysis. We found out she was bit by a Maria Pitt viper by looking at her description and then looking at the picture to see which matched up the best. And this is that is how we treated the crew members. We are the blood splatter analysts and over the past few days we've been looking for a piece of an ancient uh, treasure map that one of the crew members stole and uh, and uh, we've been looking for it and uh, there was a crime scene and we investig investigated it and there's uh, three pieces of evidence. One was blood splatter and uh, we uh, we analyzed it, and uh, later on we were told the injuries of, of all the crewmates, and we figured out that it was uh, Shipwright Neff and Dr. Smart who stole the map, and uh, their injuries were on, uh, on their hand and on their head, and uh, I believe that on, uh, Shep uh, on Shipwright's head, uh, he had to bend over to get something, uh, therefore le uh, leaving some blood on the floor, and next we'll uh, be having Michael explained the height. So first we recreated blood splatter. Next we next we dropped the blood from different heights and finally we compared the blood from the blood that we recreated from the blood found at the crime scene. The the blood could have fallen from twelve inches, thirty inches, and sixty six inches. These are the results. Twelve inches 30 inches. 66 inches. Now, will be saying the conclusion and how we analyzed it. I will be telling you about analyzing the blood drops. During analyzing the blood drops, we recorded the width of each one and found the average size of drop for each height. This is important to the case so we can find out what height the blood fell from. If the height changes, the drop size changes. Then we compare our results to the blood drops at the crime scene. We found that those drops fell from about 30 inches. We determined that the blood either fell from Neff's head or Dr. Smart's hand, because that's where their injuries were. That is what we gathered from this investigation. Hello, we are the forensic scientist, and today we'll be talking about fingerprints and a mysterious powder, a mysterious white powder found in the captain's room. The results from testing was cornstarch, which can be used for soothing the skin. The people who had it was Dr. Smart, Potter, and Shipwright Neff. Next, Abby will be talking about how we got these results. 
the results for the fingerprints as well. How we got these results is by testing different white powders, powders, powdered sugar, cornstarch, baking soda, cream of tartar, and a mystery powder. We analyzed all the powders, put them in iodine and vinegar, as well as tested the pH levels of the powders. We concluded the mystery powder was cornstarch. Next, we will be talking about the results of the fingerprint prints found on the cup in the captain's cabin. We concluded the prints were Dr. Smart's. Now Bowden will tell you how we got these results. We got these results by taking a brush and cocoa powder and dusting it lightly on the fingerprints. Then we took tape and put it on paper and then we analyzed it to tell if they were Dr. Smart's or not and the results came back positive. They are Dr. Smart's and these, this is the one that we found at the crime scene and we analyzed it with Dr. Smart's fingerprints and yes, they are Dr. Smart's. In conclusion, that is why Dr. Smart and Shipwright Neff are guilty. Thank you for watching our presentation and we are the forensic scientists.